<laughs> All right, we're live with uh, game number five starting up here between Extraterrestrials and Zerg Gosu team. And spawning in the bottom right-hand position, we have playing for Extraterrestrials, we have Bright. They are up, what, 3-0 or 3-1 right now? So they're stomping along pretty heavily. Bright's one of their higher rated players i believe he's 13 and 2 so far in uasl so very very strong and in the top left hand position we have a subbed in player actually for zerg gosu team he was not announced with their roster at the beginning of the night but of course they do have the option to sub in a player and they have decided to do so it is hassle dan and uh let's see what these two players have in store for us belcher vestige pretty fun map pretty uh Whoa, that's two SCVs. Okay, one of them's building a, building a supply depot that was heading across the map right now. Bright's very hurt. His feelings are hurt that there's no GLHF. Um, I'm, he'll probably live, but he's very sensitive, so it might throw off his entire gameplay and plan. Uh, that may be the way to break a winning spree. So it's a meta gaming head games we got going on right there and Pastel Dan looks like he's just going to go ahead and proxy. Uh that's another good way to kill people uh who are on a streak. It's just proxy them. Defeat their standard play with ridiculousness. And that's not any type of insult. I actually like watching cheesy plays sometimes. Definitely makes it for an exciting series. And tonight's games have actually been really good. Pretty diverse set of games. <laughs> Some pretty heavy macro ones. The first game, which I'll definitely be casting from replay later, from what I gleaned from it as I was watching it in the background as my stream was crashing and being terrible and not running correctly, it was insane. Like, very, very crazy. Proxy shenanigans, all types of crazy. Um, so, yeah, keep that in mind. Uh, make sure to check that out back over on my channel, Lokazi, which is up and running again right now. You want to bounce over to it so it bumps it up on the team liquid list uh, eventually but of course we'll still be running on this alternative stream which was very nicely provided for us uh, we have the first reaper out here pretty soon as uh, that proxy racks is now done doesn't look like it's going to be too much proxy shenanigans he did get scattered out that his racks isn't in his main so our protest player is going to be pretty well aware of that fact though he did use a boost on his nexus which is pretty interesting usually when you see that uh you know, the Rax is being proxied. You want to save it and boost out the first Stalker. So we'll have to see how much damage this Reaper is actually able to do because that's not going to be the case. There's going to be a Zealot on the field, but it's not going to be able to chase down this uh, this Reaper. Chrono Boost still going out, and it's not a Mothership Core being produced. Okay, there's the Mothership Core starting up right now. A little bit of lack of focus fire here out of the Reaper, though. Okay, there's one. Really only getting one out of this. Maybe gonna get another one. Mother Shakur is almost done though. Has to be pretty careful. Markering that away. Not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Uh, these probes just kind of chilling though. I'll have to. F okay, yeah, he figured out that they were not really doing that much. Uh, the Shriver's getting pretty decent scouting information. And a proxy factory now going down as well. When one proxy doesn't work, start another. That's, that's that's good. We have uh, Widow Mine starting out from that. Second Reaper almost done. Or just finished, I'm sorry, heading across the field. With uh, the further building Marine, looks like it's going to be rallied back across the field. Proxy Palon's going to go down up here for Bright in a pretty solid position. And I'm surprised he hasn't really scattered around and found out where that Proxy Rax was because he knows it's out on the field. And now that Rax is going to lift and head all the way back home. The very, very long journey. Proxy Widow Mine is going to move up. It's so within sight of the Nexus. I'm not sure it was just caught being seen. It's going to burrow right there in a very scary location. Uh, and this is definitely the situation where you'd want to send yeah, a Reaper back and start baiting units into said Widow Mine. Uh, Robo is going down, though. He did see it, so... He's not really in that much danger. He doesn't really need to worry about a Reaper killing a Nexus. So since he saw it, not really the biggest deal in the world. This Marine is planned to being smashed by... Okay, there it goes. Moves out of the way. Engineering Bay going down. It's going to be three racks. Command Center just now starting. So that's a decent amount behind that Nexus. But he's kept up on SCV count pretty decently, especially because of Chrono Boost. It looks like this... South Widow Mine may not be noticed, and if he gets a good hit, 
Like if he pulls and he clicks on say like one of these bottom three mineral fields, that's gonna be a money, money widow mine. We'll have to see where the transfer goes to. We have the observer almost finishing up and it's gonna move right out over that widow mine. And it's gonna be interesting to see if he notices it. If you play this perfectly, you can oh rallied uh now he knows that there's one down there too. But if you play this perfectly, you can actually like scan right now. Oh, he's living it just out of range too. But you can definitely scan and have it jump up and blow up the observer, which is pretty hilarious. And it looks like the Reapers are gonna back off. But that is a that's a pretty fun trick if you're going for some widow mine aggression. Prepare a scan. Place it next to, if you can, try and get as close to that robo as possible. And then just wait for it to pop out and make sure to click target. You have like a 1.5 second delay where you can actually target the observer as it pops out. And, uh, you know, actually kill it. Same thing works for oracles. Can end games pretty quickly. Not necessarily because it is actually game ending, but because it's super frustrating. <laughs> uh, so that's a lighter tip that a lot of people uh, use. It's pretty fun. And we have... These Reapers trying to deal damage, and they actually might be able to take out the Sentry. would actually make it worth this aggression. One of them does die. doesn't really get that much done. But that Sentry, very, very low, and it, it had to pop its uh, Guardian Shield to stay alive there. Of course, Guardian Shield, pretty good versus Reapers. Uh, we have the Colossus. Looks like they're going to be starting up here pretty soon. Forge is down. Plus one is almost finished here for a turn. Okay. Yeah, Terran's getting into a pretty good position to be aggressive. He's falling further behind on worker count. Uh, he's trying to be aggressive still with this Reaper, but it's almost enough ranged units that the Reaper, next time he pokes up, he's just going to get shot in the face and die. So he's probably going to have to hold off on that. But the first drop is coming in. It has two Marauders and three Marines. That's not really that scary at this point in the game. This is more of like a Wings of Liberty drop that's scary. But now Photon Overcharge just kind of makes it not that scary at all. This is kind of a lot of units to possibly lose for one gateway. He does pick it off, though. He lost three Marines for that one gateway, so entirely equal in price. But our, our Protoss player didn't even bother trying to pull units over there, so... First, Colossus out on the field, scouting a Phoenix. He's going to have Phoenix going across. Third command center almost done, so our Terran player is going to be kicking into some pretty good econ. He's catching up on SCVs now. His, uh, his actual supply just passed our, uh, Terran, our Protoss player. But, uh, okay, there it goes. Protoss gets another warp and jumps back up a little bit. Marauders trying to deal damage from the low ground. Very tricky there. They do get it, and then they're going to back off. All right, so just being really annoying, this this one little drop. Not getting a massive amount of damage done, but it is very annoying. Bunker going down here at the third base location. It's always nice to see a little defensive bunker being placed. Some mules landing. Marines heading over towards the third. They're going to jump into that bunker. Factory from the south is just kind of chilling out, trying to get some detection. Lots of... Uh, Rax is down right now. Production definitely in our Terran player's favor at this exact moment. But we have another two gateways finishing up. Colossus range almost done. Charge is on its way. Plus one weapons, etc., etc. Pretty good uh, list out of our protest player as far as upgrades. It's kind of a pretty good attack coming up here and probably about 150 supply. At about 150. His third's going up, so we'll have to see if he decides to leave passive. Another drop going down. Actually, it's the same one. They're just healed up. Now, these two Marauders, the Bash Bros, taking forever to die. Oh, they pick off two Zealots. More Zealots moving up, and they're just going to back off again. <laughs> out they go. Drop and heal. It's going to take quite a while, though. Uh, that Medvac is out of energy. She's been working really hard. Lucinated Phoenix scooting across the map over here is going to see the Viking count is starting. So he knows that uh, it may be time to transition into High Templar, which he drops the Templar Archives right away. Uh, we'll have to see how many classes are actually going to be produced. Right now there's two. So two's perfectly fine. Forces out at least, you know, six to eight Vikings, depending. 
And uh, will the Terran player overproduce? Because that's kind of what the intended tech switch is here when you stop building Colossus. You just want to show that you have them, you want the Terran player to overproduce, and then you want to laugh when you storm them and they don't have ghosts. So that may be able to happen. We'll have to see. Yellow Terran skinned Marines look kind of ridiculous, actually, now that I'm looking straight at them. I don't think I've seen anybody play Yellow Terran with the uh, level 30 skins on. Scan going down. Where's that at? Okay, that's just trying to get a count on the Colossus. It sees that there's two, so he may be starting to cut Vikings. He's been producing a lot of them. Pretty decent sized drop over here. Now, these medbacks are really low, and one of them just gets feedback right there. Very nice feedback. Uh, so now, now all of these are not going to be able to get out. There's just no situation where they're going to be able to get out since there's only one medvac left. And it's just really a matter of how much... Wow. He's letting him kill this Nexus. Okay. Well, I think that was a little bit of a blunder. A lot of unpowered gateways over here. There was an Atrocious Pylon powering that. And uh, these Marines dealing a lot of damage. A lot more damage than I thought they were going to be able to do when that drop initially came in. And it uh, looks like four Marines left behind. Brave souls that they are. They're going to get sliced up by a Zealot. Might actually kill all of them. Okay, now he's going to micro these like crazy. This is a micro challenge right here. And he wins. He's the winner. This Marine had <laughs> one, one HP. Uh, he does die now, though. And the micro challenge is over. The Marines are dead. All right, and now the Terran player looks like he's decided, okay, well, I got some good damage done. I got the Nexus. I depowered a lot of gateways. I think I can move out on the map right now. And he's absolutely right. He has a very large supply advantage over our Protoss player. And, I mean, if he engages pretty well, dodges just a few storms. Looks like there's only really one available right now. Yeah, it looks like just one. The second one's coming up, though. It's, it's pretty close to being actually ready. So I have to see. A uh, decent amount of Vikings. Looks like he finally did stop producing them, though. So, it looks like he's going to try and move forward and just snipe the third. It's going to be really hard to engage this Terran army, uh, especially since he pulled all these SUVs to try and tank. Though, all the Colossus going down. Now, there's just a few Templar in the back. It looks like one of them has Storm, and the rest are only feedback. Uh, there's a Storm going down. There's a second Storm going down. All right, so there's two more Storms. Nope, one more Storm. And there it is. Last Storm going down. Vikings landing. The third base is dead. The main is still dead. So while this army is probably going to slowly over time maybe get cleaned up, uh, Vikings, the actually only good ground unit they're effective against is, oddly enough, Zealots, uh, which doesn't really make that much sense. But they're actually kind of decent versus Zealots um, across the board. But, uh, yeah, it looks like our Terran player is going to stomp up and probably be able to finish off this game. That snipe of the main actually put our... Our Protoss player really far behind as far as production goes. And then that third dying, it might just be curtains since the natural is now about to fall. Just not letting the Protoss player rest, continually hitting over and over again. This natural does go down. And he's going to kite up this ramp. Now he's going to take out the Robo. No more Colossus production for you. Vikings are landed down here in the back trying to depower the upgrades, but... There's quite a few pylons back here powering these forges. So these marauders are cross country, of course. Cross country version of marauders where you have no medvacs and you just stem them, see if you can make them all the way through an enemy player's base. Third being refocused as it's being built. Only one nexus up on the field right now for Bright. Things are looking pretty dim for him. He has gotten down 100 supply almost, about 80 right now. And uh, it looks like he wants to engage, but he knows it's not really a possibility. Bunkers going up at the third base. Meanwhile, the fourth base is finishing. The fifth base has finished, or I guess the fourth base and the fifth base. Uh, They're finishing up across the map. And factory's still floating out in the middle. Production's still going strong. It's now 2-1 on on the upgrades for, the Prot or for our Terran player and 2-3 for our Protoss. And I just I don't think he's going to be able to hold on much longer. He has no income whatsoever. And despite these being weird engagements with really not a lot of forces, since a lot of them are on the other side of the map, our Terran player is still exchanging decently well just because of how much micro he's putting forth. And we now have the... Okay, yeah, we have the Nexus going down over here. And it is chugging along. I think it's probably going to get sniped by this force that's moving up again. 
And there's still SCVs mixed in with this force. He did a pull of SCVs initially. Can you do wait me five men, please? Storm going down. I'm not really sure if that's like trying to be sassy, but he's just gonna load up and sprint away. <laughs> I really have no idea what can do await me five minutes, please. It's supposed to mean. Uh, the standing army is actually pretty beat up, so. Um, a few good storms could actually deal a lot of damage, but this multi drop out of Castle Dan, he's just hitting in multiple locations at once. Feedback did go down and kill a medvac. Again, cross country marauders dying in the main mineral line. Good storm. Looks like he's going to be able to force this back yet again. Uh, but now there's a giant army at the top of this ramp. He should be able to engage these zealots and pick them off, just slowly stemming forward, picking off one at a time. So our Protoss player, he just hasn't had any production in so long that uh, he just cannot hold. And now there aren't even any High Templars who merged them into Ar Archons and just really can't. The last few probes trying to assist with this army. Archon standing strong up here in the front, finally getting killed off. Now it's just a few of the most worthless gateway units versus Terran stalkers left out in the field. Here comes some reinforcing zealots though. And the natural finally has finished building. Hooray, the natural is back up. Uh, here's a big force coming up for our Terran player though. And I think the natural is probably gonna go back down. And uh, now the final drop, finishing everything up. Nice proxy play, well played. They're out of bright. And uh, for Zerg, Gosu, Team, Fesseldan, looks like a, a pretty good substitute. Keeps their hopes alive, moving it into a game number six. I'm pretty excited. We haven't had many series this season go into a game number six. Definitely a lot more last season. Starting to even out a little bit more this season. So game number six coming up here in just a minute. Thanks for tuning in. This is Lokazi casting for you. If you're watching me over on SCV Rush, go follow me on uh, my social media. Uh, follow me over on Twitch. Jump over there. Stuff like that. Uh, also, in Twitch chat, you see people being linked. So click those. Follow players. Uh, of course, getting exposure, always great. So moving into game number six here in just a minute.